my social media was blowing up. I started reading the messages. Sarah, what have you done? Why did you post a picture with Miss Israel? Do you realize you get killed for that? My name is Sarah Edan, and this is my story. I'm from Baghdad, Iraq. I'm originally a musician and an activist. Growing up in Iraq, we didn't have a lot of things because we were a country that was ravaged by the war in 1990. We would only get the power like three hours a day and sometimes not at all. Every time we had water, we had to store the water. Same thing for food, same thing for medicine. And besides that, we had no freedom. I grew up under dictatorship of Saddam Hussein. We couldn't speak our mind. We couldn't even make a joke about Saddam Hussein because he had his intels. They were in our schools. And if they heard any child even say a joke about him, they would go and interrogate the family. Why is your child disrespecting Saddam and his socialist party? We were always like watchful of what we tried to say in front of other people. My opinion about America when I was a child, I just imagined they were this evil country that wanted to kill every Iraqi. This is what we were taught under Saddam. You would go on the street and you would read in the graffitis, it says, death to America, death to Israel. We didn't have news. We only had three channels. They were controlled by Saddam. In school, we were very indoctrinated. And when we sit in class, when the teacher walks in, we all get up and we say, live long, Saddam Hussein, may God protect you. And that's our salute. We were like a military when we were in school. And these are kids, six years old. My dad used to be military engineer and he was part of the Ba'ath party until he resigned. And because he resigned, my family were targeted by the Ba'ath party because They've always wondered, if you resign, why did you resign? The fact is my dad did not want to be part of Saddam party anymore. When he decided to go invade Kuwait, my dad said, that's it. I'm not invading another country. I don't want to be part of this regime anymore. When the U.S. came in, I was playing on the freeway, soccer with my friends. All I remember is I saw all these vehicles and my friends, they were hiding behind me, and, you know, they were little girls, and we didn't know how to react. But then all of a sudden, they came down, they left their vehicles, and they started giving us flowers and candy and, like, little pamphlets saying, we're not here to kill you, we're here to help you. Then we felt, like, so comfortable, and we were like, what is going on? Why are they not trying to kill us? Like, I thought they hated us. You know, that was the moment I woke up. That was the moment when I knew that every, everything I was taught by Saddam was a lie. During the war, I remember I would lock myself in my room, and every time I hear the airplane and I hear the rocket, I just pray that this is not going to be our house. It was very, you know, traumatizing. Music was definitely my therapy, and when I listened to it, it gave me hope. And this is how I fell in love with American music. I remember one of the first songs that I heard was Christina Aguilera, The Voice Within. Young girl, don't cry. And I heard that and I'm like, what is that? And this is when I started teaching myself English. The more I understood the music, the more I loved it. And the more I thought I wanted to leave Iraq, I wanted to come to the United States. I wanted to become a musician. And it was literally my only escape. The more I interacted with the U.S. military, the more I liked Americans. I would stop and talk to them just to practice my English. And I just love their kindness, like how they treated us. And I remember the first time I went to apply for a job as a translator, I was only 16 years old because at the time they had an ad in the newspaper that said, if you work as a translator, you can apply for a green card after a year. I remember I walked to them and they saw me and they're like, your English is good, but no, I'm sorry, you cannot work with us. Come back when you're 18. And that's exactly what I did. I went back on my 18th birthday and I got the job. I cried when I got my U.S. citizenship. It was just the best feeling in the world because this is a country that I love so much. 
I feel safe in America and every day. Sadly, I think, you know, many people who are born here don't recognize uh, how privileged they are. I think that's the issue. When you live in a country where you don't have a single right, when you feel you're not protected, you come here and you see how privileged you are and you appreciate it. When I represented Iraq and Miss Universe, you know, it was a dream come true. I needed to represent Iraq in the best way possible because Iraq was a new country. All the other countries were coming to me. They all wanted pictures and they wanted to talk to me because they've never seen Miss Iraq before. Then I remember I saw Adar, Miss Israel. Adar was the only one that did not approach me. And uh, for me, it was weird. I saw her, we stared at each other and I thought, what's going on? And then I waved at her and then she waved. And then after a little bit, she came over and she said, listen, I'm sorry, they told us not to come and talk to any of the Arab countries. And I said, why would they tell you that? She said, you know, we don't want to get you guys in trouble. But I said, I don't mind that. No, if anything, like we need to show the people, you know, like we're here, we're ambassadors for peace. And then we took a picture and we posted it on Instagram. My social media was blowing up the entire time and I had 50 maybe like phone calls from my family, from the Miss Iraq organization. So I started reading the messages, Sarah, what have you done? Delete the photo, delete the photo, all from the Miss Iraq director. I called him like over the phone, he was yelling at me and he's like, what have you done? Why did you post a picture with Miss Israel? Do you realize this is treason? Do you realize you get killed for that? You have to delete that. I said, I didn't do anything wrong. Why are you yelling at me? He said, I will call on Miss Universe right now and I will tell them. We took the title from you. You cannot compete anymore. Delete that photo. I talked with my family and they got phone calls from stranger numbers, like, you know, threatening them. And I remember I was reading the comments and the messages and they were threatening me, don't ever think about stepping a foot in the Middle East, you'll be dead, your family will be dead. People were posting my pictures from when I was with the US military and saying, she's CIA, she was planted there. The same people who had these conspiracies, they thought that I was Jewish. So I was getting all these messages of hate, like Hitler should have finished you, and like crazy, crazy insanity. So when I saw that, it kind of opened my eyes and I wanted to use my voice to help as much as I can. And everything changed since then. I remember the day, the first time I was called to speak about that and it was the uh, American Jewish Committee, AJC, and they invited me to go to Israel to speak. They said, Sarah, we would really love you to come and speak in Jerusalem about peace. They said, you know, we are really desperate. We don't have a single person from your country that came and spoke about that. But they're afraid to come to Israel and speak because they would be killed. And I thought, I have the privilege of being American and I'm one of the lucky ones, so I, I need to use my privilege. I was so ignorant when I went to Israel because I've been told my whole life it's a Jewish state. I had no idea that they had Arabs and Muslims and Christians. The guy who came to take my bags and the people at the hotel and the manager of the hotel, they were all Arabs. And I said, what are you doing here? He's like, what do you mean what are we doing here? We live here. I said, how do you live here? He said, Sarah, there are so many Arabs. They live here and Muslims and like we're Israelis. I visited many places and I was speaking to Arab community, to Jewish community, Muslim community. Everyone was so welcoming and they were so happy. And even the Arab and Muslims, they're like, you are a hero. And I'm like, wow, that's the first time that an Arab Muslim calls me a hero because it's usually Arabs are angry with me, like on social media. And I remember I saw all these signs in the streets that said Ramadan Karim and Eid Mubarak. They were acknowledging the holidays of Muslims. And I remember I just stood there and I looked at that and then I saw all these women walking wearing hijab with their kids. And I said, wow, this is beautiful. To me, it felt like this is like a mini United States in the Middle East because there is no other place in the Middle East where you could go and see Jews and Muslims walking together. Not a single country. And I'm like, this is the country that they hate and they're fighting. So I always say my trip to Israel is the eye opener. And when someone asks me about the conflict or they don't understand, I always say, go. 
If you haven't been there, you need to go talk to the people and make sure, like, what do you hear on the news? Is it true or not? The situation today in America is very crazy. We're a little bit more divided. And I wish that we can become a little bit more united in that way that you could work with people despite of their politics or their beliefs. You cannot jump to the conclusion that someone disagreed with you on something, that they are communists or they are fascist. And this is all the media. Many of the journalists that I see today on Twitter have an alliance to a political party or to a politician. We're being fed narrative, not news. They're trying to win by making you hate the other person. And I think that's very wrong. And on the long run, this is going to hurt us deeply. Because if we become ununited, then our enemies won. And this is exactly what they want. You know, being someone who came from dictatorship and realizing how harmful that is and how that kept us in the dark ages because we could not say anything. It made us ignorant. And that war on freedom of thought will make you an ignorant person. What America means to me is freedom. It's, you know, life with dignity as a human being and having rights. And that's something, you know, I never had in my life until I came here. And now I'm afraid I might lose this privilege. So I have to fight to keep this privilege. And it, this fight is worth it. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation.